Hey guys, hope you're having a great day. Today is going to be a bonus video, um, just a midday kind of video to address some of the questions that a lot of people had on my trip to Vietnam. They seem genuinely interested and put it on their bucket list. And um, if you've never been there before, I hope these tips can help you um, on what to expect and how to plan your trip to make it go smoothly. Um, we're going to start off with the trip price. I believe I paid a little over $1,600 for both flights. So round trip back to and from Hawaii. And it was a little bit more expensive. You could probably get away with a $1,200 to $1,300 trip. But I am very picky on certain airlines, especially if it's a long flight. So that is why it became a little bit more expensive. But that also included my hotel. And that was for about a week and a day stay. So I stayed about um, eight days. The reason it was expensive is I'm very picky with certain airlines and I flew from Honolulu to Narita, Japan via Hawaiian Airlines. I am a Hawaiian Miles member so I like to get uh, my miles that way. And from there I use their partner to go to Hanoi which is Japan Airlines. They're a partner with Hawaiian Airlines and you go from Narita to Hanoi Noi Bot Airport. Coming back, I used Korean Airlines because I've had previous, previous experience with them and I really enjoy their meals and their service. And uh, I took it all the way from Hanoi to uh, Seoul, Incheon, Korea, and then from Korea to uh, back to Honolulu, back home. And that is why my price was a little bit more expensive. But if you think about it, a trip to the United States, uh, our East Coast trip was much more than that. So. Um, it is quite a deal to go international. Uh, this, like I said, was not only the flight, it included my hotel. I picked the Sunline Hotel and um, I'll show you some pictures of it. I didn't take too many pictures of it, but um, the inside of the hotel is very clean. It's a pretty big room compared to for, you know, Asian standards. You get a pretty nice king bed, I believe, or is it a queen bed? I'm not sure, but it's a pretty big bed, nice and comfy, nice and firm, beautiful bathroom. Uh, you got a safe in there, a closet with robes. They say it's a three-star hotel, but I think it's more of a four-star hotel. When you enter through the front, there's always a bellman who opens the door for you. You never touch the door. Um, if you're um, a smoker, there's a cafe next door that sells coffee and beer. You can smoke there. Different kind of smoking laws, a little bit more lax. You can smoke in front of the uh, hotel. The hotel serves a free breakfast that comes with your price and um, it's a pretty good buffet breakfast. Some odd things that they would serve but it was very delicious. Like for instance, this is breakfast and it's not brunch because it closes at 10. So I think it's open from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, you just go downstairs and tell them your room number. Uh, they had a Vietnamese beef stew for breakfast which I thought was kind of heavy but the taste was wonderful. And they also serve like french fries and stuff, but they have other offers, offerings and um, some vegetables, salads and fruits and they made homemade yogurt. So everything was fabulous and it's free. If you're looking at Sunline Hotel right now, the going rate, the cheapest right now is $27 a night. So you cannot find that in the US or anywhere else at all. It is so cheap. Uh, I liked the location of the hotel. Across the street was the famous Four Peas Pizza, which I uh, showed in my video. Uh, there are numerous restaurants around there. And the best thing about Sunline Hotel is they are located on a small lane. It is still busy, but not as busy as a main street. So you don't hear the beeping and the constant traffic noise because they beep a lot in Vietnam. If you go to Saigon, you'll notice, I don't know about the newer hotels, but um, some of the older or not as old, but probably 2013 to 2015, even if they were renovated there, there are no windows for some reason. And it's very claustrophobic. And probably the reason is to block out the traffic noise. So when you get a hotel in Ho Chi Minh, Saigon, uh, you will not have windows. But in Hanoi, there are windows. And the windows here at Sunline are double paned glass windows. So you don't hear the noise as much and you still get a view. Keep in mind that a lot of people visit Vietnam and the Southeast Asian countries during their peak season. And that's usually September to about, I would say March or April. That's the perfect weather time. I can only go during the summer for my vacation. So I went during non-peak tourist, you know, 
seasons. And I guess that's good in a way. It is extremely hot, and that's why a lot of people don't like to go there. Uh, but you don't have as much tourists. There are tourists around, but it's not as crowded. And then you get the lower prices. You can find um, a lot of deals on third-party websites, Expedia, Priceline, etc. However, I will tell you that I had a very bad experience with them when COVID hit and I lost a lot of money. It was like fighting tooth and nail between the airlines and them to give money back. So I would highly recommend you book directly through airlines and through the hotel, um, through their actual website. And this also applies to cruise lines and other things like that because when something happens or you know you have an emergency it's much better to get you know onboard credit or get your money back easily when you go to vietnam you have to remember it is a communist country although very friendly and i have no problems with it and i've been there twice and enjoyed myself you do need to get a visa if you are a u.s citizen um, a lot of websites that when you search for visas will have travel agencies that will do it for you. They aren't per, per se scams, because I did that when I first went to Saigon, but they would charge you a higher price, up to probably $75 to $100 sometimes, but that's probably for their labor. And it's not much labor. You just go directly to the um, immigration site through the Vietnam government, and I'll put the link down in the description box below if you're interested, and you can fill it out yourself. And just be sure to be very meticulous about the numbers, especially your passport number. Don't put it in error or put extra numbers or missing numbers. Be sure to put your first, middle, and last name correctly, your date of birth correctly, because this is international. They don't do month, day, and year. They usually do day, month, and year. Make sure everything is in order, because when you submit that and it's not right, and they find out at the airport, you may be denied entry into the country. But if you have everything and you're not rushing and you make sure that you do it months in advance, don't be those last minute people that apply for a visa two weeks before your trip. You should be okay. Um, you go to the website, you fill in everything, you scan in a passport photo that you can get done and um, you know at any other passport place because you need another photo, not just your passport photo. You also scan your passport and it's done within about three days. They email you a link and you print out your visa. But I will say, even though I printed out two copies when I got to the Vietnam Noi Bot Airport, they didn't even want my copy because it's already in their computer system once they scan your passport. The fee to get a visa for a tourist visa in Vietnam is about $20 US. You have to use your credit card and they charge you a uh, international fee, but that's like really ridiculously low. It's 20 cents and everything's good. I got in with no problems It's into Vietnam twice. Um, so yeah, don't use those, those travel sites unless you're really lazy and you're rich. Uh, definitely go straight to the Vietnam immigration government website and do it yourself. It's much cheaper. When you get to the Noi Bot airport or even the Saigon airport, it is beautiful. Everything's very clean, very modern, much more modern than our international airport at home. It actually makes our airport look sad. Um, you will enter customs and you will present your passport, like I said, to the immigration officer that looks very grouchy and they're in these military olive drab uniforms with their red star and gold stars. They look very scary, but you know, they're just doing their job and they probably are there working long hours. So they're not very happy, but they'll get you through as long as your uh, visa is correct. You go through customs and, um, You'll find an uh, area with SIM cards for sale and ATM. So go straight to the ATM and I suggest you go to the Agribank ATM because there's a whole bunch of other ones. Um, they're all fine. They're not scams or anything like that. Uh, but Agribank gives you the best rate I've heard in Vietnam for your dollar to dong ratio. There are the old fashioned cur currency exchanges where you give, you know, US money or whatever currency, but you get a better current rate at the ATM. Nowadays, you don't need the currency exchange. You just use your ATM card and they'll convert it. You just ask for like 2 million dong, which is about, you know, a couple hundred dollars, maybe 200, less than $200, maybe a hundred. I might be wrong, but something like that. If you ask um, for that, or it actually might be 85 bucks, I think. I might be wrong. I think when I took it out, it was $85. So what I mean by that is call your bank let them know I have a local bank myself. Let them know that you're traveling to Hanoi or wherever you're going to. 
so that they don't think that somebody stole your card and is using it for fraud. And you should be okay to use it there um, in their ATM. Their ATM has English options, so you should be fine. And then, you know, most uh, banks nowadays, you can check online often on an app, whether that or a website, and you can see it just um, converts it to US dollars. So when I checked my app on my phone, it just said $85 taken out at this ATM. Then when you get your money, you go right down the, um, it's right next door, literally, uh, you get your SIM card. So nowadays with technology, it's great. Before your US phone would not work in another country and um, you could not use your phone pretty much unless it had Wi-Fi. But now you can buy a cheap SIM card, got a SIM card for 10 days unlimited internet access and I could uh, use Wi-Fi to text and call people. I have Verizon and it doesn't matter what you have, AT&T, whatever, it'll work. They put the SIM card in and it was only $9. Unlimited internet. I could use my Google Maps. I could call for a Grab, which is their Uber um, and stuff like that. And um, I, I was fine. And I even, you, you know, I used a lot of data. Sometimes I would watch videos or I play games and it never did uh, run out. So totally a deal. What I do suggest is you bring a paper clip with you or um, if you do still have the tool from your cell phone to take the SIM card out because it's a little hole. Otherwise, when you come back to the United States, if you want to call a taxi or get a Uber, um, your phone will not work because you're going to have to get that Vietnam SIM card out and put your card back in for it to work when you're back at home. And people don't think about that. So um, I was stupid and I didn't think about that. And I went to the nearest uh, cell phone center in Hanoi and they are so nice. They're such nice people that she, I said I was willing to buy a tool and she said, don't buy one, here's a paper clip. So she gave me one for free. But you know, sometimes people might not be as nice as she was and it's just best to put a paper clip in your backpack that way. Uh, when your flight lands and it's about to taxi to your gate when you're at home, you can take that time to uh, put the pin in, take the old SIM card out and put your SIM card in so that it works when you're at home. Speaking about ATMs, if you're worried about cash, there are many ATMs around Hanoi that you can use. Some don't work for some reason. Um, they're totally like blank and the machine's broken, but you know, I would suggest going to an ATM at an actual bank so you don't get skimmed or your card, you know, you hear about those things where it takes your information from your card and your PIN number. Just go to a real bank, use their ATM, and you should be fine. It's the same thing as any other ATM, and it'll give you cash right away. I did that throughout my trip, and I had no problems. How to get around Hanoi, it's pretty walkable. I walked most of the way. Um, everything was less than a 10-minute walk. Uh, that's the reason why I picked my hotel as well. You want to pick a hotel in the old quarter of Hanoi. Hanoi is a huge city and there's different, uh, you know, districts, if you want to say that, of Hanoi. And if you pick the wrong one, you're not going to be near any of the tourist attractions. So you just got to remember to be near the lake in the old quarter. There are tons of hotels around there and you should be fine to see all the sites. There are some places that are a bit far from the old quarter that are tourist attractions, such as the Ho Chi Minh Mausoleum, and there's, um, you know, Temple of Literature and stuff like that. For those things, I used a Grab. Like I said, Grab is the Southeast Asian version of Uber. I downloaded the app prior to getting on the plane, and it worked flawlessly. The only difference is you can get a regular sedan taxi or a bike. So I opted to use the bike, it was exciting. They all come with helmets for their passengers, even raincoats like little ponchos when it rains. So it was very convenient. They all spoke enough English to get around. And if they didn't, you already typed in what you want, where you wanted to go. So they knew where, they wanted, uh, where they're supposed to go to. I think the bikes are quicker because they can go around the cars. And it's not as scary as you think because they go pretty slow. They don't go more than 30 miles an hour. Um, and it's cheaper. With a bike, it's 80 cents US to get to most places around Hanoi that are far, uh, more than a 10 minute walk. If you're getting a car or a sedan, a vehicle, it's much more, but I think it's probably a dollar something cents. So still cheaper than Uber in the United States. If you're wondering about transportation and how I got to and from the airport, the airport is about 45 minutes to an hour away from the old quarter or the actual part of Hanoi. 
So you can take the number 85 bus, I believe, and it's a red bus that is right across the street from where you exit your arrivals. It's only about $2 and it takes you to the city center. Um, but I got there late at night, so I didn't want to catch the bus and I didn't even think it was running. So what I did was I went to kluke.com. You can also use Viator, they have stuff like that. And I set up some transportation through a already like a set up booked taxi type thing. I think you should do this or you could do a grab too. But like I said, I came late and I wasn't sure if any grabs would be around. Um, I did Kluke because it's a set price. It was $15 straight, I believe. And you know, you already paid through the website. So there's no exchange of cash. And he dropped me off at my hotel. And yeah, they were waiting just like you see at the airport and they hold the card with your name. And it was very simple. It was a nice clean Toyota Corolla car. So, you know, it's, it's fine. If you do flag a taxi, just be sure uh, to check what the rate is and to use the meter because they can scam you and overcharge you. So it shouldn't be more than $15 to get to the city center of Hanoi. Questions about food poisoning and ice and su such. I have never gotten food poisoning the two times I went to uh, Vietnam or Thailand and other countries. I think just be common sense smart about it. You go to restaurants or even street stalls where you see a lot of people eating because that way you know the turnaround of food is constantly moving and cycling through. Whereas if you go to somewhere that's not busy, that food might have been sitting there all day or even from yesterday if they're not a popular place. Um, so just do your research. You can Google uh, look for Google reviews of certain places. They even do street stalls nowadays so you can see if people got sick or if the food is bad. As far as ice, when you go to most restaurants uh, or coffee shops in Vietnam, they use the cylindrical ice with the hole in the middle and that's when you know they bought their ice from a reputable place that uses filtered purified water so you're not going to get sick from that ice. I know I had a, I showed the crushed ice. It was almost like a frappe that uh, coconut coffee I had, but I trusted that place because a lot of tourists go to the note coffee and you know, they're not going to feed a bunch of tourists some tap water ice to get them sick because they would totally be out of business because it's a trendy place for tourists to go to. So that's why I trusted them. But usually do not eat crushed ice or drink drinks in crushed ice because you don't know if it was made by themselves with a little you know, ice maker thing with tap water because you can't drip, drink their tap water. Our, our systems are not made for that. We're, our gut biome is not used to that, whatever's in their water. Um, so yeah, just be careful about that. Make sure you're using the cylindrical purified ice if you have ice in your drinks or just don't get ice or get canned drinks all the time, Cokes and Sprites. They all taste the same over there. For their cash, they use what's called the dong, D-O-N-G. And it can be confusing if you've never been there before because there's a lot of zeros. Uh, I think the lowest is 10,000 K, uh, 10,000 dong, 20,000 dong, 30,000 dong, 50,000 dong, 100,000, 200,000, and then it goes to 500,000 dong, which is the highest. But it's pretty simple. Usually when they put it on their menu, they're not going to put a whole bunch of zeros on there. Of course, they're saving space, so they'll put 30 K. So 30 K for a coffee or 30 K for a beer, and that's about a dollar 27 cents US. And then you kind of get used to it because you use the K's instead of 30,000. So you'll just say 20K or 500K and it gets simple from there. But if you're not used to it, make sure you count your change uh, because, you know, with all the zeros, you might get confused. I'm not saying they'll scam you, but sometimes some people do or sometimes they miscount and you just want to make sure you get all your change back. Also, a lot of places are cash based only. So, you know, if you go to cafes and stuff, it's mostly cash. Um, most bigger restaurants will take credit cards, but always have cash on hand. Going around Hanoi, if you're hungry for snacks or you know you need a water or whatever, they don't have 7-Elevens, but there are tons of Circle Ks. So they're all around the place and they've got other mom and pop shops that sell water, beer, and chips and stuff. So don't worry about snacks. If you're hungry, uh, these Circle Ks, I believe are 24 hours. So if you're hungry and you have the midnight munchies, the Circle K right around the corner will take care of you. You'll be okay. As far as the tours I took, um, they were set up by Viator. I've always used them ever since I went to Thailand. I used them in Portugal 
And I used them in Saigon when I went there too, and I never had a problem with Viator. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just stick to what I am familiar with and I never had a problem with. So that's what I used for my Ninbin tour. And for my Halong Bay, I booked directly with the cruise ship. And you know, there's a backstory to that in that video. But pretty much um, the Ninbin tour, I used Viator and I had no problems. They come and pick you up at your hotel. They usually, um, in all the countries I've been to, they provide a lunch and they take you back to your hotel. Another question I get a lot is, are the people in Vietnam um, angry at Americans or do they not uh, welcome Americans so much because of the history of the Vietnam War? And I would say, no, they're very friendly and you don't need to be ashamed to say you're American. Just don't be rude, just be respectful like you would in any other country, I would hope. And the people I find are very genuinely warm and friendly. And they really want to get to know you. They'll ask you a lot of them where you're from. We'll sit ne next to you. I've hung out at cafes all day. That's what I did just to relax and had coffees or beers. And they'll just talk story with you. And they're very, very nice people. Most of them, uh, the younger generation or, you know, maybe up to their 40s, usually speak good English. So they'll talk to you. Made friends with that one girl in the pizza place. She talked to me all night and uh, was very friendly. So I would say no, they have that attitude where it's the past and you know we're not gonna talk about something of the past. Um, it does obviously bother them, but it's not something they wanna bring up. They're more people that want to move forward in the future and it's just like, get over it. It's the same as Japan. You don't go to Japan and uh, talk about Pearl Harbor, you know, you don't bring that stuff up. It's just, you go there, people are friendly and you just get on with your life. Of course, history, there's historical museums there to talk about the war from their perspective. And some people that are hardcore Americans or whatnot might say that's, you know, propaganda. But I, I don't want to see it that way because whatever country you're from, just like us, um, you have your point of view of what uh, conflict or war was like. So I totally respect their uh, views on the war. And, you know, sometimes I think part of it is true. Talking about gifts in Hawaii, we like to uh, always bring om what we call omayagi. It's a Japanese word for, you know, bringing gifts to your family and friends from a place you've traveled to. So uh, an idea to get good, cheap gifts, mostly food gifts, um, is to go straight to the supermarket. Go to the Vietnamese supermarket. There's tons of different coffees they have, instant coffees. They have dried mangoes, dried fruits, uh, dried nuts like cashews and candied almonds. They have uh, pho seasoning, instant pho seasoning. That's super easy to make. If you crave pho, you just drop the cube in water and it makes pho. You just need the noodles and the herbs. Uh, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, just be sure to not buy meat products like beef jerky because they do sell their Vietnamese beef jerky because you cannot bring meat into any other country. Uh, Korea, when I went in there, they said you had to throw it away because I had a la layover. Uh, they ha have it on the speaker when you land in the plane. No meat allowed from other countries. Then you'll also hear it when you come home to the US. And customs, if they catch you, that's a $10,000 fine if you don't declare it. So can't bring any meat products, just remember that. I did ask the customs officer at uh, the airport here in Honolulu and he said the dried fruits are fine like the dried mango so I did bring some in um, so if you're wondering about that that can be bought as gifts definitely go to the supermarket don't go to the touristy places that sell it I mean you could I mean they they're looking for business too and they're probably working hard for their money but if you're on a budget it's much cheaper to get everything at the supermarket and finally going back to the airport I didn't book with Kluke to go back to the airport because I found that, you know, the grab system was pretty um, reliable and I was leaving in the morning anyway at a reasonable time. So right when I got to my lobby, I got on my phone and I requested a grab vehicle. Of course, I'm not going to go on a bike with my suitcase. And uh, he came within five minutes and he took me to the airport and it's already, like I said, a set fee. So nobody's going to rip you off. It's just like Uber. It's cashless because you already put your um, credit card information in the app. And again, it was a little over $15, um, probably a little bit more because it was during rush hour when I uh, went to the airport, but he got me there on time and it was great. When you get to the airport, I um, made three hours as a buffer zone just to be sure I got on my plane, but actually that was too much because I didn't see the Korean airline kiosk open. 
and there's an information booth with a person that speaks good English and they just said that you're here too early so the Korean Airlines crew wasn't there so I had to wait about 20 more minutes before my ticket counter opened and I checked in was super fast you go through the same TSA line just like us where you can't take liquids in and you got to put all your stuff in and separate your electronics and all this blah 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 in the machine and um, you go through the metal detector blah 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 same thing but that was pretty fast their line is pretty fast and I had time to go get something to eat uh, they have the typical airport fare uh, your Burger King and all that they have a lot of duty-free shops there so if you are there early you can look at a lot of different things and surprisingly a lot of the stores were Korean inspired like they had a lot of Korean and Lotte products if you're into whiskeys, they had tons of whiskeys that were um, like high-end stuff. So you can get that duty-free cigars and stuff like that. Also, if you forgot to buy a gift for someone or you thought about it and you're like, I don't think I have enough gifts, they have a bunch of gift shops in the airport as well selling the same stuff. Dried mango, the coffees, the magnets, and other food products that you can take home. But again, remember, it's at a little bit of a higher fee because it is airport prices. And yep, I got home with no problem and you go through US Customs, same thing like I said, um, just don't bring uh, meat home or any meat products and you'll be fine. And hopefully that answered some of your questions. If I forgot, you can type a question down in the comment box and I'll try to answer it the best I can and I hope this was helpful. And on Friday, we'll go back to our regular food showcases. So if you like this, press the like button. It probably won't be as popular because not as much people wanna go there, but. I figure I'd answer the ones who are interested, their questions about traveling there. And hopefully you can go there soon because it's not very expensive to go there and you can have a wonderful time and eat like a king and queen and you know, you'll be all set. A very great vacation destination. So I'll see you again, peace out.